The Citizen Bike Show. News. Commentary. Interviews. Citizen Mike Show starts now. Welcome to the Citizen Mike Show. Thanks for tuning in. We do appreciate it. My name is Mike Berdinsky. On my right, the editor of the Record Journal, Ralph Tomaselli. And breaking news, John Letourneau, the Republican town councilor, is back in the studio. John, thanks for coming back. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's We've got a lot of stuff to, uh, to talk about, and um, I want to start off with the uh, plan to redevelop the Bristol Myers uh, property. There was a big meeting on Monday night. Um, John went, I went. Um, actually, we happen to have seats almost side by side there. John, I want to get your takeaway. Um, you were there, you know, listening for over an hour. Your impression? Well, it was, uh, it was an interesting meeting. Um, it, was a, <laughs> it was a very crowded meeting. The, the auditorium was full. Um, the residents showed up with their signs and gave the signal to the commission what their what their wish was, and that was vote no. Um, my takeaway: I, I was a little disappointed with the commission. Um, I felt that some of the questions that, uh, or, or some of the statements, not so much questions, uh, the, the statements that they were making, um, such as the sign, you know, one of the, for instances, was the signage, um, the planning and zoning when when they. Um, when they do a project like this, and, and there has to be signs posted on the property. And, you know, to bring that up at the 11th hour, this is a night that a vote needed to be taken. So put us back in the kind of, who brought it up? Why did they bring it up? What was the uh, point it, of bringing it I, up? That one was, I, I don't know what the point was of bringing that up, but the, um, that was uh, uh, Jeff Cohan that brought that up about the signage. Um, the other thing that is, is, as the conversations went on, um, um, Jeff Cohan spoke quite a while uh, about different issues, and, and, and it seemed like some of the other co uh, commissioners picked up on it a little bit, was the um, uh, traffic, that it was a peer review traffic study, and they were looking for more. The commissioners. The, the commissioners. The commissioners. Okay. That was not the night for that. That should have been done right from the beginning. That should have something that, that um, you know, if, if it was even a remote question, it should have been thought about and, and given to staff to take care of before that night. That night was they were there to make a vote and a yes or no vote and come up with some solid reasons, yes or no. But I, I think they were a little intimidated by the audience. So um, I want to back up a little bit on the sign issue so we can get a, just a little fuller explanation. Um, there, uh, apparently, a lot of us learned for the first time on mm -hmm. Monday night, um, there's a provision in the zoning regulations that signs announcing the hearings or the meetings on a special permit are supposed to be posted around the property and according to some obscure regulation, again, we are, we're all learning about it for the first time. The zoning enforcement officer is supposed to, I think, certify that, that the signs were posted as required. And so uh, Commissioner um, Jeff Cohan asked whether that was done. Um, after some hesitation um, or some silence, some pregnant pause, it came out that no, the certification wasn't filed. Uh, but there was some banter uh, among those in attendance that the signs were were probably standing or were 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 there as they were required. Do I have that right? And you and you, I think you're past yeah, comment. You I, didn't I, like that being. Oh, let me just finish it. And the regulation goes on to say that if the signs were not posted, that could be could be grounds for a denial of the special permit. And I, I think it was uh, uh, Commissioner. Um, I'm not going to pronounce his last name correctly. Uh, Al Allison. Allenson. Al Allenson. Steve Allenson. Allenson. 
um, he made a vague comment to, uh, uh, that he had driven around the property and he thought he saw all the signs properly on, on um, uh, posted on the roads. And, and that would have been Research Parkway and Carpenter Lane. Um, it's got to be the roads that are um, that the property um, goes out on to, abuts to. Yeah. And 68 was a question. So, Somebody Ralph, the Record Journal wrote an editorial. Uh-huh. Um, what was your view, the paper's view? Um, of the Bristol Myers denial. The denial. Yeah. That it probably um, was a good idea uh, that it was denied. That Because um, this is a flip. This is a switch. Well, f yes, it is. Yes, it is a, a flip. Although, and we were, let me try to compose myself here. Okay. Mike. <laughs> we can I apologize. Up. No, it's all right. I caught you We certainly there. didn't. Um, <laughs> which I shouldn't have been napping, so I wouldn't say you've caught me. Um, we certainly uh, didn't find reasons to be against the project prior to the vote. Um, we didn't wholeheartedly endorse it. We were clearly affected by the letters we received, the other feedback, the social media campaign, and uh, we're okay with this vote and them going back to the drawing board. Um, we've got a video. Actually, we have two of uh, two of the commissioners um, speaking. So let's get to those and we'll talk about them. We're going to show the first one first. And this is Steve Allenson. He's an alternate. And he was appointed because one of the regular commissioners did, did not show up. Bruce, let's tee up that Allenson video. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, but I'm just having a tough time with the amount of traffic. Our peer reviewer reviewing the numbers as of the last change and him, his comments being, well, we don't really know. We need to wait and see. And for this amount of traffic to come in on a wait and see type of assumption, I, I just, I like concrete. <laughs> and I know we're not gonna get concrete from an estimate but it just doesn't sit well with me. And um, I'm, I guess I'm the guy to say it. I, I'm, I don't know that I, that I feel very comfortable with this amount of traffic. I don't know that the peer reviewer made me feel very comfortable about this amount of traffic coming in. And I felt that, you know, I should let the commission know that that's my perspective on the application. So, um, John Letourneau, there were comments made um, in the course of the evening that the applicant had uh, done a traffic study and um, Wallingford chose to sort of double check the methodology by having not an independent traffic study, but someone reviewing the methodology of the applicant's traffic study. Um, and um, you saw Steve Allenson sort of commenting on that. But go over, once again, your criticism of the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. You, you, did you think that um, the town should have had an, another independent traffic study? That, that would have changed things? I don't know if it would have changed it, but yeah. I think um, it should have been done. If this was, if this was an issue yeah. with more than one commissioner, I don't understand why it was done at the 11th hour. Are you pleased that this was a four, four to one? Are you pleased that this was denied? Um, I, I can't say I'm, I'm pleased that it's denied because as a counselor, I, you know, I look at tax money, so there's, there's tax money. As a counselor, I also have to look at and, and have concern for the residents too, and I understand the residents' plight. From the back neighborhoods up there. Therefore, well, therefore, um, uh, I think there was information missing. To before they made the decision, before a decision was made, I think there's information missing. And and if the parking, I, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the I, I was working on a parking project today. <laughs> um, if the if the um, traffic was such a sticking point, and, and you could see Steve's, Councilor uh, Allenson's comments on that, and uh, other commissioners picked up on it also. 
my thing is why now? Why now? That that should have been earlier and much, you know, it, it, it's too late. Well, I'm going to be the devil's advocate on that, and then we're going to get to the next tape, which is Jim Fitzsimmons. But um, if the applicant does a, a traffic study and that's damning enough, um, you know, maybe that's maybe that's sufficient. Maybe that's all the information that, that they, they needed. It's hard and, to say, but not looking at the study. I don't yeah, know how right. in-depth they went. Are, are you, I'm sorry, just to clear, yeah. are you saying that the applicant did a study? Yeah. And it raised issues? Well, of course. They, I mean, okay. traffic was a dominant, and, dominant issue. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So, therefore... The peer review shouldn't have even have happened. No, the, no, 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 okay, no. I'm peer, sorry. No, no, no. Peer review is always a peer review is always a good idea. But a peer review is not an independent traffic study. Okay. A peer review just looks at what the applicant did and says, well, his sources are reliable. The method right. is uh, industry standard. You know, there are no obvious flaws. But um, a peer review doesn't start from scratch. They don't start a, a, a traffic more study from audit. scratch. It's yeah, it's more, more of an audit. Right, and I think what I'm trying to get so, yeah. is, are you saying that the applicant's traffic study should have triggered an independent review? Did well, it, that's John's opinion. Okay, what, what is your opinion? Um, the, the, the applicant's traffic study provided enough evidence for the Planning and Zoning Commission to deny the special okay. permit. Gotcha. So... Um, I think the decision initially, I'm not sure of this, but the, the decision to go with peer review was probably the office, probably the planning and zoning office. So we got another video. Let's get that up and we can talk about it. Three, two, one, go. Is I, I do think that the traffic is a predominant issue here. The size is another large issue. I did not discuss the noise, but I would be on, like to be on record as saying the noise stemming from this project would definitely impact the surrounding residential neighbors. The project could have an adverse impact to the residents in the area and potentially is detrimental to the use of adjacent properties. I mean, and, and I think as you talk, the, um, the, talk about the compatibility with the zone, under um, section B.1, A through D, we talk about, it was mentioned by Commissioner Cohen, the appropriateness and location of use. I think the first A through D all have some issues related to this particular site. Um, lastly, I, I think, excuse me, not lastly, I think there is a couple things I'd like to mention because this commission uh, never has a room like this. We never have the room filled, um, but we do have something that when we as a group talk about the plan of conservation and development, and it was mentioned in our plan of development regarding um, the Bristol Myers site and the uh, need to do something. And I, I was reviewing the town's plan of conservation development. And on page 15, we talk specifically in reference to economic development, talks about balancing the community's priorities for building and maintaining attractive landscapes and semi-rural character in its larger tracts of industrial land with the needs of corporations to build or modify facilities to match their operational requirements and financial constraints. And I, I do think that this is just a significant change in this particular area. Balancing the semi-rural character. Hmm. What do you think of Jim Fitzsimmons' pitch? I think if I was on the commission and I was thinking about voting against the proposal, I think Jim opened the door for me to do that. John, you agree? You're shaking it's your head. It's an industrial park. You know, it's not a park. It's an industrial park. And this, this, this business that we have to make it look like a town park, maybe not necessarily so. It's an industrial park. It was there to put, it was there for a reason, to put buildings up for industry to come to town. And uh, it's nice if you can put up a building and it's landscape beautiful and all of that. That's nice. But, I, you know, it's, it's, it shouldn't be a, a, you know, a rock-solid criteria. So there have been prior issues with noise in, pro in other parts of town in the past. And one of the arguments that's been raised in online and letters of the editor is um, why do the neighbors move there if they know they're going to be um, uh, uh, cozying up next to a commercial zone or industrial zone? Did you ever have that philosophy? And how would that apply to this situation? Um, I, I was concerned with noise here Yeah. Um, because of the, the warehousing in the tractor trailers and the tractor trailers with backup alarms, those at a decibel level that they're meant to be heard. 
This isn't a passive noise of a truck engine or a refrigeration unit or something like that. This is a distinct noise that's made to be heard. And being such, you get that kind of anticipated truck traffic out there, the neighbors up above are, would definitely hear it. And, and I, that's a concern. That, that's, a, that's a legitimate concern. So one of the organizers of the group that was uh, protesting the um, application for a special permit um, is a lady called uh, Jen Frechette. And um, she lives in my neighborhood. I live in one of the neighborhoods affected. And she, um, she posted a, uh, um, some thoughts online, and I want to read part of it and uh, get, your, get John's reaction and then move on to another topic. So, as she writes, again, she's very involved. I mean, right. the community up there is very involved, right. very well organized, okay. and um, uh, and very effective. You know, I'm I'm very impressed with the commissioners. They asked many they asked many solid questions of the applicant and allowed all residents to be heard, even when that meant staying well into the night. Most P and Z meetings uh, have minimal attendance, so I'm sure the commissioners take note when a massive group massive group, okay, is in attendance to oppose a project. I commend them for hearing all sides, weighing the information against the zoning regulations and coming to a decision that's best for the town. There's other comments, interest time. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to read them all, but um, certainly a, uh, a planning and zoning uh, meeting or a, um, a public hearing, um, I think is a pressure valve for um, democracy such as, such as uh, Wallingford. And if the, rather than have the community pop, mm -hmm. you know, uh, residents can go to a meeting, fill the room, um, show that they're uh, they're opposed, and I think it's uh, it's right and proper that the planning and zoning commission or someone sitting in you know, in, in that in that sort of authority not necessarily change their mind because the room is full, but to maybe take a second look at the evidence, you know, and uh, and to look more uh, more carefully, and maybe a new argument to raise and. Uh, comments from the public can cause a commissioner to look more carefully at certain pieces of information and and weight them differently. Not that, again, it's a popularity contest. Planning Zoning Commission certainly has to make some tough decisions. But um, as, as Jennifer Shett pointed out, filling the room is important, especially if you're articulate in what your um, views are and what facts you want the Planning and Zoning Commission to, to, uh, to look at. John, any final words? We'll go to the... Yeah, yeah did, go ahead. That's, that, you said something very key here. They came, they were polite, they were articulate, they brought good points forward, um, and it's good to fill the room with residents. I wish our council meetings had, had that kind of participation. I bet you uh, do. On, yeah. on, well, at least at budget time. <laughs> you know. All right. uh, uh, we're going to move on. Um, one of the... Uh, issues that came up at the last council meeting and that we discussed on the last Citizen right. Mike show is a level of police protection. And there is a, a group that had formed, it's a resident crime watch group that, that has been very active. And I, I, I think they may have formed in reaction to a car break-ins, but they, again, they yeah, okay. They yeah. Um, they've been very active. And at um, the last council meeting, um, that group was um, specially invited, and the chief of police, Bill Wright, was invited to sort of go over some of the issues that the group raised. We're gonna—I think we got seven or we, we got a bunch of clips. We're gonna show you in a second. But John, you were at that meeting. Mm -hmm. um, your your um, assessment of the effectiveness or not of the citizens, uh, the resident crime watch group. Again, a very good group, and they were—they didn't come to yell at, yell at us or yell at the chief or d make de you know, unreasonable demands. What they did was they came, they organized, um, and this was the second meeting that the chief was involved in. And um, it, it was a good dialogue. And they brought up, uh, I have a sheet here, um, a number of items. There, there was uh, five and then additional requests. They had a couple of more additional requests, and 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 they they were good. They they were good, and I could see their point why they were asking for this stuff. And the chief did a very very good job explaining, okay, you know the the amount of officers, the you know the timing. Um, so he explained to the residents why some of it could be done and some of it can't be done, and um, 
uh, but it, the dialogue will continue. So it's it's good. It's it's a very good dialogue. Ralph, well, what I really liked about both these groups we've talked about the Bristol Myers group, and then this uh, group that has taken on crime is they both um, a lot of the early forming of the group, especially with the crime group, occurred online and people griping online and giving mm. their opinions online. But then they took it from social media, you know, to the planning commission meetings or to neighborhood meetings where we had an, uh, an op-ed piece in the Record Journal where these neighbors gathered. Some of them got to know each other for the first time. They formulated strategy. Um, this crime group started out online and then, and then started having regular meetings. Bring, so I, I think that's a good, rather than just griping online, staying online, and never really affecting and just trolling people and bullying people, these people took concrete action in person mm -hmm. through government. So I think that's great. So let's test the effectiveness of the uh, Wallingford Resident uh, Crime Watch group. John Letourneau, you, you willing to vote to appropriate money to hire four new officers, raise taxes as necessary to hire four new officers on top of the two additional ones that um, were added this fiscal year? I'd have to get more information from the chief. What more could you possibly want? You had this, you know, an hour presentation, you know, by the chief. He answered all manner of questions. Right. I mean, what do you? Well, I, he answered he answered the residents' questions. Yeah, I want to know from the chief: Is there four new people needed? Do we absolutely need these people? If we did get four new officers, would they be used? In, in these areas, or would they be used in other areas? So that, there's, there's a lot of questions yet. So you don't think that was addressed adequately at the last council meeting when the crime watch group showed up? Um, I, we didn't, no, it, it, nothing went that deep into it. D deep a little bit to the fact of what the chief explained, um, and I'm sure you're going to have a clip on this, um, is, is the... There's some there's there's some standards out there. I don't know how the chief got them or or anything about them, which I want to ask more about. That there's supposed to be so many officers per okay. thousand, and you know, it, it, there's a lot. So you're there's not a, a yes yet. You're not I'm a yes. Not a vote. yes so yet. despite the efforts of right. the John Letourneau, right, has well, but we that's got, democracy. I mean, you can't get everything you want right away. Better, just just right. asking. Yeah, that's no, all I'm doing. Yep. Um, so Bruce, we got the, we got that first video. Let's let's tee that up and play it. Um, three, two, one, go. Kind of to set the frame, this current fiscal year, um, I asked for two additional police officers. The mayor approved that, and this council subsequently approved that during the budget session. Um, so we are fully staffed now. Um, the personnel department has been um, working with us to allow me to hire lateral transfer police officers from other agencies now. Um, it's not that I'm looking to rob somebody else's help, but if we are advertising that we're in need of officers and, and they apply, then we're certainly giving them some consideration. So I say that to say this, the turnaround time is, is very quick. So my plan moving forward is to um, respectfully request staffing to incrementally grow the agency. I need to be very careful in how many that is at any one time. Currently, um, although we are fully staffed, um, I have three officers who are out on long-term injury leave, and I do have three officers who are within the field training program. Um, so six bodies I'm really not able to, to have um, on any given day, which is not bad. There were times when we were 10 or 12 short. So John Letourneau, um, the chief is saying he's fully staffed. How does that cut? And then I'm going to ask Ralph the same the same question here. He's fully staffed. So that ends it. I mean, well, it it, it unless it, it, right now, yeah, I think that was the answer from the chief. He's fully staffed. And if it goes to the budget workshops, he'll be asked the same question. He'll say we're fully staffed. He's fully staffed. Doesn't that end the argument? That pretty much ends the argument. Now at budget time, 
Yeah. If, if I see, you know, if if I or other counselors see in the budget that he's requested for two more officers, my question is going to be, or three more officers. Well, that's too hypothetical at this point. I mean, well, he says he's fully staffed. Okay. And, uh, All right. Um, well, then that's know. the end of that story. So, however, this conversation will continue in about five minutes with more video clips. Okay. So, okay. Um, but that fully staffed comment, I, you know, carries a lot of weight. Ralph? Well, in fact, you and I talked about this off air, and I think you have to define fully staffed. Oh, Ralph. Which, <laughs> yes. which, which means oh. that, I it guess, and strictly, keep me honest here, Strictly discipline you. Go ahead. <laughs> when he says he's fully staffed, I yeah. guess that means he has hired somebody for all his budgeted slots. Is that? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So my interpretation of fully staffed is um, it's not necessarily all the police officers he's need he needs, but it's all the police officers that the mayor has allowed him to hire. That's what I think he means in context. Well, okay. that's hypothetical too. Well, that's just my interpretation. When he well, says fully okay. staffed, the but mayor, that was my interpretation. The, the you, mayor, you said it was hypothetical, so well, I'm going to throw it back at you. Authorized seventy three. He's got seventy three. Therefore, he's fully staffed. We got one more. We got a couple more videos. Bruce, let's play the next one in line. Three, two, one, go. Jessica's group has offered in the document that you have that they would like to see us hire four. Um, but I also need to be very, very careful that I don't outgrow the building that we're in. There's a lot of discussion about how many police officers per thousand you should have. Um, the average is always, in my career anyway, is thought to have been two per 1,000, so which would give us around 90. Um, we're currently staffed at 73. Um, if I could get us to 80, that'd be really nice, but I understand the cost associated with that is significant. Have you changed your mind? No. Anything in that clip that um, would tend to make you vote extra money, a lot of extra money for more police officers or not? Um, again, questions to be asked. The, the, the statistical data that says you, ha you should have that many officers per thousand, you know, how is that determined? Where does that figure come from? Is this a police standard or, or is this, you know... Uh, I'm not saying he's pulling us out of the air by any means, but I, I would like to know more about that and how many towns, how many towns in Connecticut are staffed using that formula. And, you know, it would just help. It's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's nice to compare what other towns are doing too. But I, I think it was important that he said that, you know, it, it's, it, it, it is a money issue, um, um, and he's and he's aware of that, and that's something that the neighborhood group understands also. Okay. And at, it was after the meeting, one of the women said, or maybe towards the tail end of the meeting, that she came back to the microphone and said, "We learned a lot tonight, and and we learned, you know, there is it, it, it there is budget that that plays into this." So statistical arguments, in <clears throat> in in my view, can be very um, seductive, uh, very very beguiling and if you're prone to be persuaded by um, statistical arguments I think it's extremely important to research well the statistics you're going to be relying on for a decision that would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars um, the budget that was passed um, this past year has some fun facts uh, with respect to police staffing um, there's 96 total um, staff members um, in the employment of the police department, 96. 91 are hourly bargaining. Um, I'm not sure how that number is distinguished from the 73 uniform officers on the street, mm -hmm. but those are just some fun facts for further, you know, for further discussion for whatever it's worth. So it looks like you've got 23 people working at the police department that aren't sworn off. It would the math would indicate and, and that's, would indicate that's twenty three supporting seventy three. 
Apparently, that, that seems to be the math. That, that doesn't uh, seem like a low number. I mean, you know that you have twenty-three supporting seventy-three. But go ahead. So I want to know. I, I or I wanted to know. I'm preparing for the show. If there's any other data um, out there, and certainly one way of um, developing a statistical argument is checking with all the police departments in in right. the same DERG district yeah. reference group, right. similarly similar towns um, with the same socioeconomic uh, uh, profile, not. The Hartfords, the Bridgeports, the Waterburys, with that, you could expect to have a, a lot more police officers. And town by town by town, and there might be, I don't know.